Hey guys and girls, welcome back to Spare Room. This is part 7 I think of this little Murphy Bell Air Design engine and I'm Emma. We've got a block of brass that we made up last time, or time before last I think. And that solders eventually onto the cylinder block like that. We've got our holes in here for our inlet and exhaust through to the, the cylinder. That's pretty straightforward. This needs a lot of holes drilled in it. First job, I guess, is to mark the centers here. And I'm just going to blue that and set him up with a scribe block on the, on the surface plate and mark that all four ways and center punch him. And set him up, and that needs a quarter inch hole ream through it. That's the the slide for the, the piston valve. Piston valves are a bit critical as far as fits go because we're going to get leaks. So we need to put a nice bore through there and I'm going to ream it. Then we've got a lot of four Georgia obs. We're going to mark three holes on the top, one for the inlet and the exhaust. Drill that right through, and that one and that one for the the mounting holes. The drill press is probably good enough for any of these if the truth were known but I'm going to set them all up in the four jaw and do them. And then we've got holes through here, there and there which go right through and two holes for the inlet a little bit closer together that go halfway through and then we're going to set him up in the in the milling attachment on the lathe and put some slots in him. So that's today's job. Let's get in and mark this out, set him up in the four jaw. So that's the setup for that. It's pretty straightforward. I've just used the center there, the collet center I've got for this lathe, and put this in in the in the center punch and this end in the center and set it up with the DTI. See it's it took me about five minutes to set that up not much longer than that you kind of put off doing forge jaw work because it's so difficult to set everything up and in reality it's not um, It's pretty quick. I've set this up here nice and parallel. It's parallel to the jaws and it's on centre. Next job is to drill it and ream it. There's quite a lot of little jobs here. Next one I think probably is to set this up on centre this way and to drill him right through for the steam and the water and that one's tapped in each side. We don't tap right into the into the bore but it's 3 16th by 40 threads so it's not a big coarse thread. We'll still be able to get a couple of threads in there, no worries at all. So next job, do exactly the same thing, set him up all the way through for tapping size for 3 40. And this one's just pretty much rinse and repeat. It's pretty straightforward to get this right. Another thing that's not a bad idea to do is to check this for run out this way. Um, if your four jaws any good, it shouldn't be far out. Probably a fraction high on this end. 
but we're going to call it close enough. It's within about a thou all over and for this little engine that's plenty good enough. So tra tapping drill size for, for 3 16th by 40 is a number 22 drill, 157 thou. Spot that like that. Find a number 22 drill. And bear in mind that that's going to grab when it comes through, so take it pretty gentle. Next job done. The next setup is to set it up this way and to put the main ports through. And take a bit more care in marking them and get them right. And we're just going to set it up with a basically use the height gauge to, to mark them out. First job's to blue him up. We need to take the burr off this side and this side first. Most of these setups are just common sense. I'm not going to tap this until about last because the threads will get damaged. It's only a tiny little hole. The top one's for the oiler and the bottom one's for the steam pipe so they're pretty straightforward. But we do need to mark this out in four places on one side and we're going to drill the outside ones right through and the inside ones just into the bore there. So the secret will be to mark a centre line and then measure from each end with the height gauge and scribe them so that they're the same on each end. Then we can set him up again and we can drill the four holes. There's four more four more four jaw setups this way around. You could we could just use a DRO in the mill if you've got a mill with a DRO. But this is probably a pretty good way to do it. You don't have to mess around with backlash. There's less chance of mistakes. And each and every hole's nice and square and right. So I'm going to mark that out just with the height gauge and send a punch them lightly and start setting them up and drilling them. I'll do that off camera because it's more, more or less the same stuff. So I'll move this in and hopefully you can see what we're doing. Some more light here on the surface plate would be fantastic. Because I don't have the dog leg scriber for this yet, um, I can't measure right from the ground. So I've set this up on a 1, 2, 3 block to give me an inch of clearance. And I've set this exactly on centre, whichever way you go. And that scriber is right on that centre line. Next job is to move this up quarter of an inch and scribe both sides and then move him up again and scribe both sides with the other line so let's take this over to the window and adjust it so a quick look at the calculator we were sitting at 1.886 which is 886 thou we want to add quarter of an inch is 2.136 thou and that should be exactly in the right spot Scribe him carefully. Turn him over and scribe the other one. This working in Imperial kind of takes a bit of getting up to speed after metric for so long, but we're getting there. And the other one's 4375 above the center. So we're going to start again with 1.886. Oh point four. 375 is 2324 basically. So there we are, we've got our four holes pretty well nicely center punched. Next job is to set them all up, drill them through that size. The two outside ones go right through, and the two inside ones only go through to the middle. 
So that's just more four joy work and I'm going to set them up and do them now. So theory theoretically to do the opposite hull all we've got to do is turn the piece around undo draw one and two turn him around and set him up again and he should be right. It's not it's out about 15 hours something like that so I'm going to set him up again drill the next one do the outside ones and it's number three and there's number four So if we have a look at this, the next job really is to join these up with a slot and on this side to put a slot from there to there and another one from there to there. If you have a look, they're not quite in line but they're not far out. They look like they might not be quite in line but they're they're plenty good enough for steam ports. I'm not going to stress too much about that. You can't see them. If you don't tell anyone, I'm not going to. So that'll do the job. I haven't got a 3mm end mill like my boy specified. I have got a 4mm one, which is plenty big enough. All we've got to do is go to the end of these holes. Here and out to 16th of an inch from the end. So that port lines up with these two holes here and on this one we just need to go to the end of the two holes so it's pretty straightforward. I'm going to do this in the milling attachment and I've set this up pretty close uh, um, to be honest it's really only by eye but it's got to be like so much of this engine it's going to be pretty good enough. I've got it pretty close to the middle I did actually measure it but it's within a few thou and that's good enough for these passages and we just want to go between cover these holes just just cover up these holes and it wants to be about 332 deep so that's pretty straightforward if we go any further we're going to run into the mounting holes and we're going to have a steam link so we don't want to do that And that cutter's not really cutting particularly well, so we might find another one. So if we have a look, that's what we've got. We've got a slot on that side that's covered over with a little plate with two screws in it. I haven't drilled the two holes for the screws, I was going to, but when I think about it, we really want to spot them through the cover, I think is probably the best way to do that. And we've got two slots on this side, which line up with these two holes here. When we solder that together, we've got steam ports that go from here, through here, and into the intake and the exhaust port. So that's sorted next job is to solder it. I'm going to call this a night here on this video. We've got that bit done. Uh, I might solder it tomorrow but I might upload this and we can have a look. And So thanks for watching. Leave a comment and thumbs up. Like getting to know you all, everyone that watches these videos. Met some great people. Pretty awesome when we can have a conversation. More soon and be kind to each other.